prop bet like they do in football. So you can bet on soccer teams drawing. Huh. So who would ever bet that soccer would be played to a draw? <laughs> I mean, you'd have, to be, you'd have to be like... <laughs> well, what they were telling you, though... Freskin. And the whole point of that is what they were telling you is that it was by, by those odds that they were going to say that it was not going to be a draw. I mean, you were getting three to one odds. Three to one odds. That it was going to be a tie. So so who wins in that case? It's the, the Columbus? No, the gambler wins if you bet money on the oh, draw. No. Okay. And the draw is a tie. <laughs> <laughs> you write it out for yeah. Is it all? Got Listen, his phone number. On is this all, all on the pitch? I mean, the, the revolution update is is that we have a very, very exciting team here in town, and it has been quite some time. In fact, since Bruce Arena was the last coach, I think is when they were this exciting, actually. And the soccer is good. They're young, great talent, and I suggest anybody who's not watching them should watch them. They're going to go far in the playoffs, I believe. But I, do I don't know how, how did you feel the other night. Who stuck out for you? I'm a little worried about Gustavo Bo. So he missed two games in a row. No one knows why. Right? Yeah, was he suspended that. for COVID. Was he acting up? And then he played the other day. And I don't know. He's, he hasn't. So at one point, I think he had about 11 or 12 goals. And Buxa had about five. Now suddenly Buxa has 11 and he's still stuck on 12. Yeah. And at the end of the game, you can see him. He's kind of like he wants to score. He knows he should score every game. He's hitting these outside shots, which he's good at, but every one of them's getting blocked because he's forcing it. Is he still shooting? I mean, I saw a little bit. It was outside the 18. He yeah, he took about three or four 18. of them. Yeah, they yeah. got blocked. Yeah, well, yeah. So I'm just wondering, you know, like, Buxa wasn't, Buxa was terrible last year. I think we all thought, like, why did we bring this guy in? He's from Poland. <laughs> <laughs> so in the beginning of no the jokes year. There, Dave. I'm, 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 I'm holding back. It's I'm holding like back. I'm like, I know he's making a point. I don't want to interrupt him. You'd have to be a real louse to interrupt Paul's point. It but seems luckily, you already did. Go ahead. Like, Bo was linking up better with this guy Bunbury. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And he was scoring a lot. Now he's out there with Buxa, which I prefer. I think Books is really good in the air with the headers. Bo can <laughs> score from outside. But I don't know. It's just like, it's almost like he needs to be out there with Bunbury. But Bunbury's not as good as Buxa. Right, but Bunbury is an he's an edge. I I like Bunbury. I do. Too. I like Bunbury. Yeah. Yeah. He's I I he's athletic. He does a lot of things. He doesn't finish, or or that would well, have been the uh, up until la- I guess last year he started to finish, right? Yeah, I mean he's a decent finisher. I don't think yeah. he's top. But of the but league. earlier earlier in his career, it seemed like when I would see him play, yeah, he wasn't really a finisher. So yeah. he'd get himself in the middle of the play, but he wouldn't be able to finish the play. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I like them. I think what's up with these guys, too, is you're so strong in the back. You can take a lot of yeah. chances up front. Do you know what I mean? You're not, you're, not, you're not dropping back too many guys to prevent the goal that you're worried about. Your, your, your fullbacks or your backs are weak or your goalie's weak. you got a strong back line. You can really push for the revolution. That's why they're doing so well. They're taking those midfielders and they're running them up to forwards all the time. They're overlapping big time more than I think I've seen in years because they're really confident in the back. Yeah. So fast, yeah, too. I mean, oh. Jones on the right side and Buchanan on the left or vice versa. They're just so fast. They are so fast. And it's it, 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 that's why I wanted to bring up the Revolution update. I just want to, you know, r- remind people that we have a fun... If, and if they can go to these games and take their kids to these games, the kids will love it, especially if they have ADD. <laughs> it's always going. It's always moving. Nobody's standing still in the quality of soccer. I for the United this. States, the quality of soccer is pretty good. I'm going to yeah. say this. For, for prior to Bruce Arena becoming the coach, I, I, I'd go to one or two games every year. And I really enjoy I really enjoy it. But I got to tell you, there was a period there between, let's say, between Twelman's retirement and yep. Arena becoming the coach when if I did have a, a kid with ADHD, I don't. I think he. I think he or she would be very bored. With I just think they were lousy. I think yeah. they were bo- They were boring, and that's the worst thing you could be in a, as a pro yeah. sports team is being oh, yeah, boring. For sure. Yeah. And yeah. but you see them now. You're right. You know, they're they're a great team. They're really a great team, and it'll be nice to see if they. I think they're the closest New England team to a championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and right it could be this year. Yep. So and and and, and we'll see. You know, once again, we go back to maybe having a smaller stadium, getting these places full because the noise in there is constant, yeah. right? I mean, you have that whole set behind that home net or the away net, yeah. cheering and pounding. And um, every time I've brought my children to those games, they come out saying, why don't we go more to, the, to, to more of these games? And yeah. these are baseball kids and other sport kids, and they love it. They love to attend those games. And it is in Foxborough. 
you know, maybe bring it closer to the city would add way more, much more fans. Uh, I like it in Access Foxborough. By, well, I like went, it in Foxborough. Yeah. I like, you drive out there, there's plenty of space to park. There are plenty of seats. I know a 40-seat arena would be blah, 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 preferable, yada, yada, yada. But I like it now because it's easy to get a ticket on game day. The, the, and like I said, it can accommodate the load. You have if you if you bring a soccer ball, you want to play in the parking lot. It can be a lot of fun to play in the parking lot. So I know that there are a lot of arguments to move it to build its own stadium with fewer seats. But I I like what we've got. I like oh, the stadium uh, with more seats. What's that? I think they need a stadium with more seats. What I think do you mean? More people would come, like Jim said, if they had it in another look. So what do they get? About? I think it's eighteen to twenty most of the games. Is that about yeah, right? yeah, fifteen to twenty thousand. They, they, they do about twenty thousand. That's no, they could get thirty easily. It's location right now. Take you a look take, at the Red Bull Arena. Take a look at the New York teams, which bang out all, all the time. Right. All right. Why are they banging out all the time? So you think if they built it in Somerville, they could put in thirty, forty thousand? Oh, I, I think yeah. a city location. You, I, you just mentioned the Red Bulls. I went there. Did you have you been there? I haven't. I heard it's okay, good. So I went the, the last time they played, and like two months ago, I took my kid. And it's dropped in the middle of kind of a dumpy area. Yep. But, like, it's perfect. And no one's using this land anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, it was packed. Mm-hmm. After the game, I was impressed that the Rev players actually moved and waved to the section where the Revs fans were. They actually, like, thanked them for coming. I was I was sitting on the other side. I'm like, I'm, I'm here, too. Yeah, but what about you? I, what about I know, you? Like I was snubbed. I was in the wrong section, but anyways, it was, it was fun. You know, it was really a good, need, good spot. You, you really need public transit. You, they're really not looking for the Dave Radigan white 60-year-old male as their core audience. They need <laughs> they should, they to should. have the stadium. They should. Inner city, I drink easily a lot of beers. accessed by I drink the a, I drink a, I drink buses, a, and it will it will bang out. That okay. that That is exactly what they should be going for. Put it in Dorchester. Put it in Somerville. Really, I, I honestly think that would be accessed by the T's, the bus lines, cabs, Ubers, and yeah. it would be sold out. Here's what I would like. Put it in Peabody, close to my house, just a short drive for me, and uh, maybe maybe a bus line or maybe, I don't know. There's always have a, bistro, bistro, have a bistro for you to sit outside. I would a, like that. Have, that would have, be have nice. a aperitif while you're ready for your Here's what I'm you. saying. There's always pushback from the neighborhoods. They yeah. don't want these stadiums, so you have to pitch it the right way. You go to Dorchester and you say, listen, we're going to build a 40,000-seat Irish bar. Right <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sell it. And we're going to take out about 70 triple-deckers to do it. That's uh, that's good. Have, have we gotten to the end of the uh, end of the line with this, or or anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I'd I like to ask the audience about my topics that I laid out for yeah. today's podcast. I think I this had is no the way. No problem with it. He's I, ripping you. I, I think yeah. should, this is how they should be. This should be well, natural. We shouldn't be too prepped for these things. Right, we fine. have the knowledge. We have. The, we shouldn't be. Well, too when prepped. I say we. I'm looking straight across from me. <laughs> <laughs> but we can we can go through these. All right, good. You can make a list up for next week, too. I have no problem uh, with that. And you know, I can tell you what the list is going to be. It'll be Olympics, ball, pitch, which is field in soccer talk, and cheeseburger. No, because no. I know he'll lose his I think we need to talk about the MLS failing to to win again in the Champions League. Oh, that the is, Champions that is League. a huge disappointment. So Seriously, we've got that's more big, time for the Champions yeah, League. We should have mentioned that up front. That's a good one. What, is that for next week or this yeah, week? And next then week. Uh, Dave's, Dave's dating trilogies will be our final topic yes. of the podcast because you will have a lot a of balls are flying there. <laughs> 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 if, <laughs> it's sad that's going to be cut out. <laughs> That's got to be, be, that's gotta be cut out. That's All right. That's it for this episode of Soccer Heads New England. We'll be back next week. And I would like to thank financial advisor Rick Spencer, our sponsor. He'll speak to your group about college financial strategies. Call him at 978-857-7573. Also, don't forget for fundraising, the Soccer Heads experience for your soccer team, league, club, or whatever. The Soccer Heads will make your fundraiser more than a show. We'll make it an experience. Email me, Dave Radigan, at Dave at scampscomedy.com. That's scamps, S-C-A-M-P-S, like a rascal of scamps, scampscomedy.com. Or call me at 978-828-9532. For Paul Nardizzi and Jim Roberti, I'm Dave Radigan, and this has been Soccer Heads, New England.